All right, so I survived another ritual of climate change, seasons change. <laughs> and so there are points of demarcation between each season, even though it doesn't seem like it because we didn't have a crazy winter. Um, it was actually very mild. Over here in Ohio, the winters were pretty aggressive and extremely cold, but this last winter, it was basically nothing. It was like a California winter with a few snowflakes and that's about it. So even though we we're transitioning from um, winter to spring and then spring to summer, yeah, even though it's not an aggressive one because the winters are more mild, the energy, the particle acceleration is what is very aggressive. And Sitting in that pain the last couple days was fucking insane. I mean, you saw how I expressed the pain that I was going through. Some people go to the hospital and get that pain carved out. Some people will die from the pain that I went through. But it was an aggressive pain. It was survivable because I laid the groundwork to survive it. But I'll tell you, man, it was astronomically, oh my gosh. Because it's not something that you can run away from. It's something that you either have to sleep through or just deal with that dull ache that is continuous. It's not like it's getting, it's not like it, it's going through um, uh, a raise, well, a rise in energy like people feel like stuff when they feel the pain become even more radiated. It's not, yeah, it's not like a, a radiation that you feel the it build on itself. It's just a continuous dull ache until the body works through that process. And so even though it's not like so aggressive, it's still there and it's, it's exhausting and there's still energy involved. So I'm still awake and I'm saying stuff like stuff that I knew in my gut when I look at Facebook, when I look at people around me, when I read information, and even my gut tells me about people's situations, and there are specific signs and indicators of major decline in the population. Even though my gut knows, and I say it peripherally about love and all this stuff, then getting to the point that quickly, like I did the last couple of days, getting to the point of when people start loving everybody, they're near, they're, they're nearing death. And then I googled, well, what is is, is love the sign of somebody dying, love the sign of somebody, you know, death. And then, yeah, there is a Christian, you know, religious um, aspect around love and death. And love does prepare people to die. And so when people are nearing the end of their line, they start loving everyone. They start, well, start, they continue and even more so aggressively want to be around people all the time. Because, yeah, they're scared. They need company. They're not only miserable, yes, because, yes, they're under the influence. But it's a scary process to leave this world and go to the next one, whatever that is. And it's an unknown. And so the system gave people a way to deal with that inevitability in some people. Now, I have argued opposite the fact that people don't have to die. But it's too late for a lot of people. Because what I've done the last seven years was condition myself to survive climate change, even though I didn't know that was going to happen. But I definitely did change the climate in my body back in 2016, 2017. And when I saw how much of a marked difference there was in me, even just within my weight of what I did with the salt and the water and the probiotics, I was like, oh my God, I discovered sliced bread. It was like crazy. But there was a lot more I had to do and deal with. And so, and so, yeah, so the last, the last seven years, I found a way to save myself from aggressive climate change and saw that protection and overprotection is deadly, no matter what it is. It didn't matter if it was the VHCCINESs or if it was some um, herb or extract or concoction, or DETOX, or operation, or anything that's offered in the energy healing world, health and wellness, all of that is deadly. Overprotection is deadly. If you can't handle your current environment, and you're scared of the air, food, and water, there is no amount of protection that someone can sell you 
that someone can convince you that is going to save you when you already have said that you're going to die someday and that you can't handle the environment. You're not, you, you can't handle adapting to the changes in your environment. There's no amount of protection that's going to fucking save you. And that includes the activists that think they're saving people 6,000 miles away because of a war over there in Gaza or Eastern Europe or wherever. But that's the psychological operation of the system when they know people are all about protection. Because you can't even protect kids from themselves. You can't even protect kids from their community. You can't even protect the adults from themselves. Adults will harm themselves, starve themselves, detox themselves to death. Adults also do themselves in and their own family. And so the system figured out how to weaponize protection. Because what I do for myself is I protect myself. I'm very wary of strangers. I don't, I don't put myself in positions to be, to be in an unpredictable situation. Sometimes I have, and my gut told me it was okay, but you never know. But I don't go out, hang out in bars. I don't walk after midnight. I don't hang out with too many people because I don't need people to entertain me. I develop my brain. I sit in my pain. I feed myself. I don't fall into all these things that food is poison and demonize Monsanto or Gates or anyone else. And I protect myself that way. But I don't buy protection from people. I may have certain things like on, on you know, through, uh, by not answering the phone. That's my protection by not answering the phone. Like things go to voicemail. I don't, purposely go and interact with strangers, either on Facebook or YouTube or anything else. I don't try to save anyone. I don't claim that I could be a savior to anyone. I don't claim to be a hero. I don't want to take away your pain and suffering, and I don't want to give you pain and suffering. I want you to fucking figure it out for yourself. I want you to feed yourself. I want you to take care of your own backyard. But I can't tell you that, but I can represent a person who does that. That I can still respect people and separate themselves from their industry, their government, and anything else that they're a part of, politics, religion, science. And I can still respect them and give them the opportunity to, show, to see that there is another way. There isn't just your way or your friend's way or the government's way. There are different ways to do things, but you just have to figure out if it's, if it's worth it to you to even explore that. So yeah, I've been sitting in fucking pain this, this last couple days. Oh, it's been pretty crazy. Okay? And so, and it is a type of pain that it, it gives you moments of clarity. Because I already earned the actual physical pain of not having to deal with the physical, physical, like really physical pain. I mean, yeah, shoulder pain hurts. Shoulder arm pain, that, I mean, it sucks. But I don't get the headaches. I don't get the, I haven't gotten the hives the last couple of days at all, or in the last couple of weeks. The hives have been basically mineral to none. I don't get the respiratory conditions. I'm not, I don't get stuffed up anymore. I blow my nose sometimes around two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, and I keep blowing. I think that was an indicator that something was going on, was when at around two o'clock in the morning a couple of days ago, I was blowing my nose so much, so much, so much, and that was okay. That was fine. And then release demons which release the, 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 the poop out of the system every morning around the same time. And I make sure I help it all out to make sure it's all gone. So that way I can eat food. I drink my coffee. Sometimes that also helps things. The adrenaline, the adrenals go do their thing. And then I eat food to support that energy conversion. And I've been eating spaghetti, a lot of spaghetti lately with some steak and pork and all that stuff. And so I make sure that I replace the energy that's lost during those energy conversions. Because that is what's necessary. And I've been through the major pain and suffering, like physical pain and suffering, if not a feeling like there's lead in my joints. That was a couple of years ago where I felt like I was going to fucking die. Okay. And it's a different type of feeling that I felt when I was in Walmart, when that energy was causing me to be just acting so erratic and so like ricochet rabbit, just sped up. It's a different kind of pain. Back then in 2022, it was like crawling up the stairs. It was the, 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 the headache was so intense that I couldn't even, the light couldn't even, I couldn't look at the light. I couldn't even look off in a distance because it hurt so much. Where you can barely move. You can't even drink water to, to penetrate that mycoplasma that was enveloping everything. 
I, I survived that because I also pulled out the Tootsie Rolls out of my lower immune system because that's what was causing all of that debilitating sickness that would come in, in different spurts through PMS, through different triggers, through climate change, like winter to spring, spring to summer, summer to fall, fall to winter. What people have to get VHCC INESs for or get medication for. Okay? And so I had, so I dealt with all of that. And, and it was, yeah, it, it, it was a monster. And those are the B lymphocytes. Those are the T cells, the natural killer T cells and the B lymphocytes, the beta, I was going to call them beta cells or B lymphocytes because it's from the bone marrow. That's where the origination of the new, um, immature, naive, uh, protection. That's why they're saying that men can also have babies because you can take it from the bone marrow and develop children from the bone marrow, whether it's male or female. Okay, but through this simulation of science, it's through sexual reproduction, but the system can develop children and new humans out of different ways. Some which people are like, oh, it's against God. Well, okay, that, that's an allegory that was fed to you, and that's fine. I mean, it's, it's perfectly viable. Believe whatever story you want. But science is never settled. Science can always change. <laughs> and so, so anyway, so yeah, I had to release that demon and that was all in my shit. That's what's crazy is that, yeah, poop cult indeed, but not really because I'm not worshiping the shit. I'm releasing those demons that are causing people to actually die suddenly. And it is a process because you can't just think that you can get rid of crap in your body and you're all better. No, it's in your cells. It's like the exchange. Like when you exchange something for another thing, it goes through a process. You gotta go and fill out this, and then you gotta go put it in the mailbox, and you gotta wait however many days. It has to get to the post office. Then the person has to go in and process it. Then they gotta send it back to you. And so there's a whole process of ch exchanging one thing for another. And that's like the old world being exchanged to the new world. It is a process. It is not something that happens like that. And it is something that might take, actually, yeah, seven years. It's like seven days in the Bible, right? The God created heaven and earth in seven days. Well, it might take you seven years if you make that your major focus is to survive the climate changes. Not resist it, not, you know, be upset about it, but understand that it's going to take something on your end to save yourself or else you'll be stuck trying to save the world and go broke and die from that. And that's what the system has figured out, is how to weaponize people's intentions to save others. Weaponize their intentions to be a savior or a Satan, whatever it is. And so you fail to protect yourself because you're trying to protect the world. Okay? And so overprotection, love, and using cultures as a tool for intolerance, projecting destructive anger. See, I was angry the last couple of days. I was in fucking pain. I was angry at my people on Facebook. I was angry at people who were, who were all about hate and love and all this other shit. And I was I was angry at people who want to die someday. I mean, I was angry at a lot of things. None, none of which is really your fault because you are what you, you, you've come into this world through a specific lens and then it's going to take a minute for you to change those lenses out. I was fucking angry. So, and I was, and I was, I need to be an asshole because that was what was going to keep me alive because I knew there was shit being pushed through my lymphatic system that if I didn't get up and move and project anger and whatever else without harming anyone that, oh my God, you, a person could actually die. And it's interesting through that process. And then I see on Facebook through new scientists, it says, if you, if you get angry, you might get a heart attack. If it's already in you, it's a matter of time before something triggers it. People are like, oh, you should be calm so you don't get a heart attack. <laughs> what happens when you walk into a crowded room? What happens when the climate fucking changes? Like it happened. What happens if you walk into a Walmart and you haven't conditioned yourself to handle pushing through those blood clots? Because those blood clots come from entities trapped inside the body that's not about not allowed to release. What happens when you walk into some places and the energy is causing then not only the growth, but then immune system activation? And you're told, don't be angry because you might get a heart attack. Well, I understand that if you're like 80 or 90 years old, I fucking get it. But when you're like my age or younger, <laughs> you better fucking get mad and survive the heart attacks. Because it's a matter of time. If that's in your genetic line, if you're holding that many blood clots from whatever, I don't care what you blame it on. If you hold that many blood clots, you got to, the body has to be able to push them through 
and then disintegrate them and release them and parse them out to wherever so you can survive. And so if you have blood clots in your system, it's just a matter of time before they're going to, something's going to happen and you're going to have to deal with it. And you, if you survive it, great. Feed the energy, release the demons and stop constricting your elementary canal and stop trying to stop your body from releasing. But people don't. And so then the system says, okay, well then don't emote. Don't feel anything. Don't emote. Here's a drug. Here's this. We'll carve it out for you. And the body's going under more trauma, more duress. And then they don't survive climate change. So activists turn into world vaccines protecting people to death. That's exactly what activists do. And I see it on our Facebook. I see people who are anti-Israel, people who are anti-GMO, anti-V, anti-this, anti-that. And I get it because you're thinking that's the enemy because the system made you think that because they've done things and you've seen things that you can make correlation equals causation in your world. And so they have gaslit people into taking a side and becoming a Satan to somebody else and a savior to somebody else. And that's how the system was able to control you through your emotions on what you see, what you feel, what you hear, and all that stuff. So once I figured out how to save myself from the climate change and I strategized my own survival, activism ca- ceased being important. I had no one to blame, no one to project onto, no one to beg to be my savior or accuse of being a Satan. I had the ability to see things extremely clear through my lens of my own accountability. And I could separate the people from their government and also understand why government does what it does. I recognize patterns of major decline. That's all the love people. Oh, I love you to death. Oh, I love everybody. Oh, okay. Major denial. Oh, nothing's happening. I'm, I'm in pleasure in paradise. Oh, look, my kid is so cute. Yeah, okay. Major destruction. Well, people are just harming themselves. You're seeing them going to the hospital, getting everything carved out of their body. And I take myself out of situations proven to be extremely harmful to in the body, mind, and spirit. Well, I don't hang out with anyone because no one talks to me about any things that are important to me. They're either talking about, I don't know, getting drunk, getting high, or what? Let's go to an art museum. <laughs> okay. I can look that on Facebook. But at this point, there's nothing really to do with people except to go get drunk and high and go out to dinner and talk about what? If I'm not in contractual survival relationship with you, what's there to talk about? The people that that I that have that understand me, they're on my Facebook, and I talk to them through my Facebook. People here in my immediate world, they don't even understand the fuck where the hell I'm coming from. Yeah, I have nothing in common with most people, so so yeah, I don't put myself in situations that are harmful because <clears throat> I know what's going to happen. I have to go and feel the pain and suffering and release. And so I sit in my own pain and suffering and make realizations through that pain and suffering and feed the energy, rest the energy, even understand the energy. I find ways to release the energy without harming anyone or anything. And I represent my own ideals and ideas. Everyone out there represents what they believe in. And they have no problem presenting that. And that's fine. You observe it. You don't confront them and say, oh, that's bad or wrong. You're like, okay. And you can make your own observations. And you don't have to point anyone out because I'll tell you, What people do in your world, there's probably a million people out there that do the same thing because we've been cloned on so many levels. Your lifestyle, your belief system, your politics, religion, science is, has been cloned in so many different, in cultures. It's just a matter of how it manifests and what words separate them, but it's the same representation. Savior, Satan. I also realize there is no saving anyone next to me or even 6,000 miles away. And if I feel I can save people and government, Say people, the government will give me a chance to put my money where my mouth is and I go broke and die for others. Now look at the activist world. They're out there in pleasure and paradise, going to rallies and activism and their kids are starving. They're gluten free. They think everything is poison. And then they die suddenly because they don't have any nutrition. Their parents are afraid of everything. They hate Monsanto. They tell everybody to eat organic. They're vegan and vegetarian. How are these fucking kids going to survive vegan and vegetarian? And what's brilliant is government will make sure they will bring that war home to you. That was why I was laughing yesterday around that Biden's going to bring Gaza to the U.S. They're going to bring Palestinian refugees to the U.S. Oh, oh shit. Government will make sure they give you what you want. If you want to fight other people's wars and battles, they will bring the war home to you. And you can prove to people how much you care about somebody 6,000 miles away who doesn't give a shit about you. So now you can love everyone to death and overprotect them and they will destroy you in the process all because you have misplaced your energy because you can't take care of yourself. The people you think you're saving will destroy you when given the chance. 
They can never save themselves. That's the thing. Try to save your kids. They'll keep taking from you until until you, they destroy you. And you'll keep giving them the energy until they keep taking it, until you learn how to put boundaries down. Most parents don't even have boundaries around their children. There are no boundaries. And the kids will suck the life out of the parents. And that's what the intention was in it. Parents become the sacrificial lamb. And so will the kids, because kids are going to have a bunch of kids. And then everybody is gone. Ge that genetic line is gone. <sighs> and you think you're going to be a hero, you become a vaccine to the world's population. Ironic, isn't it? Through those lessons, I became more intelligent. I become more intelligent as to why the system must regulate humans who fail to regulate themselves and is never a peaceful process. It is a dangerous process of change while people grapple with the notion that pain and suffering is necessary to advance humans. But how much pain is up to each person to decide for themselves? We cannot legislate how much pain we give to people or take away from people. And the, gov the government must give people the choice as to how they manage the life in their body, mind, and spirit. Once I understood this is how government operates, and I look at all the anti-government people who don't understand the other side of their science biases, I see people and families are behind their own destruction of their own family genetic line because they're withholding food from their family, they're giving them over -veed, they're detoxing them to death. I mean, these poor kids and these poor parents don't know what the fuck they're doing. And they're hurting themselves because they're too biased to understand all the stories. And they're too far gone. When you know you're too far gone, everyone's the enemy. And that's why I stay home and stay safe. Because when people are realizing their own mortality, they will take everyone down with them. And so, and the way I was the last couple of days, you can only imagine if someone had a more of a screw loose in their head and they're, and they're homicidal and they're out there doing stupid shit. And then, yeah, you see news reports. 14-year-old was going to go in and hurt a school. Another school shooting was averted. A machete guy, do you know, I mean, uh, somebody burning a house down over here, three blocks away from me. We have a, a, a serial arsonist here in Canton, Ohio. Holy shit, yeah. People are going, people are getting a screw loose because people have a screw loose and the environment actually influences it and actually accelerates it. And so people do what they do. And sometimes it's deadly. And that's why I don't hang out with people right now. And I probably won't for a very long time, if at all, because the system is cleaning itself up and people are taking themselves out. The government gave people the option to change, to research, and even develop arguments, despite opposition. But most are not brave enough to, or focused enough to put their money where their mouth is. So the government gives them everything they could possibly want until the person destroys himself and their family with their own blessing. Touché. Okay, so yeah, we're May 1st, May 2nd, today's May 2nd, is my anniversary of coming to America, because April 1975 is the fall of Saigon, and then all the planes that left Vietnam, well, May 2nd when I arrived to the Presidio in San Francisco, and I came here to America, and here I am. And so, Beltane is why the high energy. Yeah, we're Beltane, this is the new spear spring or something. Ritualistically very aggressive. And people are going to the hospital. I see on my Facebook, someone's going to the hospital. And they're the ones that even mentioned Beltane. And they're going to the hospital. Why? Because the environment was that aggressive. It caused another growth, another disturbance in their immune system. And they don't like feeling that. And so what do they do? They go to the hospital. But they're anti-government, but they're going to the hospital. So it never fails. After, after a major energy conversion, people go to the hospital. And so, yeah, so we're going to see parents you know, work their kids to death, like this one parent causing his kid to keep running on a treadmill. The kid's not even that big. And even then, you don't force a kid to do that. That's why, you know, they don't want people having parents now because now parents are going to do things on their own and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. These kids are suffering no matter what. And in this environment, when it's so unpredictable, you have to be forced now to take your kids to get treated because they're not supposed to suffer because the parents can't handle their own suffering. And... They'll do things to harm themselves and whatever. And so it's, it's pretty much a losing venture now. Having kids in this environment is a losing venture because you can't now, you, there's no way to predict. Before you can get a cure or right, take a little cure and everything is great for for like six months, seven months, eight months, nine months until you get like cold and flu season or spring allergy season. Now things are changing so much that these kids are, are going up and down. The parents are like, what the fuck? So they, the parents are forced to get their kids treated to death. And you can't make a kid suffer. You cannot legislate that. And that's pretty flipping crazy. So, yeah, so you're going to see sickening moments. A father made his six-year-old son run on a treadmill because he was too fat. 
Yep. I know, it's it's done. And so what you'll find are people who really don't care about the people they're defending. They just love to hate who they think they're the enemy. So this is about the war in Gaza. Okay, I knew it was a gaslit situation to get people to react, to bring out what was already held inside, which is their own intolerance over, you know, a culture. People don't like Israel. They think they're horrible. I know people have blamed Israel on 9-11, and I, there's no way to prove that. Okay, that was 20 years ago. I mean, you could say the whole thing with JFK, how many years ago? 80 years ago, whatever it is, 70 years ago. You know, I mean, how far back are you going to go and blame the government? I mean, I can't, I, I, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm not saying it is true. What's the point? What's the point of holding on to that much hate of speculating that some culture, whether it's Israel or whoever else was behind all these crazy world events? Because at some point, you're going to have to figure out how are you going to survive these crazy world events? Okay? And so when you think about it, when push comes to shove, and now the war is coming home, the system is going to want you to prove, put your money where your mouth is. If you want to fight somebody else's battle, literally, they will bring the war home to you, and you can live among the people that the, the people over there are fighting each other over. If that's your whole thing of saving the world, fine. The war is going to come home. How many people who hate Israel, who love the Palestinian people, think they're a peaceful, wonderful people, how many are going to take them into their home and feed them and clothe them and watch over them and protect them from slim to none, if at all? Slim to none. They're already, the left and the right are like, well, we got to take care of our own people. We can't afford to take in immigrants. I mean, they already have issues with people over the, coming over the border. I mean, even seeing over there in, in Southern California, over there at Carlsbad. Ships coming in. Not ships, boats with a bunch of illegal immigrants. Okay, whatever. And they get off the boat. They're on the beach. And they run into a car. And that car speeds off in like San Diego, Carlsbad, wherever. And everyone's all up in arms. I'm telling you, the, the system knows exactly <laughs> what they're doing. And so if you have an issue with what goes on over there in Israel and Gaza and Palestine, fine, we'll just take in all the refugees and we can just take care of the world here in America, right? If you want to save the world because your American government's so evil and the UK government's so evil and Israel's so evil, you will, you will be, you'll be forced to then Prove that you're taking up for the underdog and you, you better be proving that you're going to take care of these people. You better be the first one lined up to host a family. And so what you will find are people who really don't care about the people they're defending. They just love to hate who they think are the enemy. Because most people have absolutely no intention to put their money where their mouth is. They will defend Palestine through a proxy of activism so they can hate Israel, so they can hate Jewish people. That's what it's coming down to. They will defend Palestine through a proxy of activism so they can hate Israel, so they can hate Jewish people. That's what the system is trying to prove. All the activists don't give a shit about anyone but themselves. They're fucking bored. They have absolutely no dreams of their own. And they're tired and they're husbands. So it's easier to go to war and hate people using other people. Because when push comes to shove, they become silent and they walk away. It was never about helping people. It was about hating people. And I knew that a long time ago. People are transparent. And you know shit's going to happen. Somebody will do something. Somebody will get blamed. Because we had to get involved in another people's war and be critical about other people's situations. So if you want to host a refugee family and protect a family and watch their every move and house them and feed them, then you are putting your money where your mouth is if you're going to be an activist against the war in other countries. I don't pay attention to what people say. I look at what people do, what they would do. And I don't see anyone say saying they will volunteer to house refugees in their home, especially ones from Palestine. I don't see any letter they've written to Congress asked to host a refugee from Palestine to save them from Israel. I see no critics of Israel saying they will house a Palestinian refugee in their own home. Strange, you are silent. But I expect that. 
It was never about saving Palestine. It was about hating Israel for so many things. And you can say it was from 9-11 or whatever, but it doesn't matter the reason. What matters is people will use other people to hate somebody else, which makes you no different than who you hate anyways. So if, if you hate Israel for using the Saudis to, to cause the World Trade Center to go down, okay, well, what are you doing to the poor Palestinian people who are, who are just like the Saudis being used as a tool? Mohammed Atta or whatever, if you even think that's what happened. You use the Palestinian people to convey your own hate for Israel. How is that better than 9-11 was an inside job? Don't become the people you hate. Become better. And so then, what I wrote here with that video from that guy, Steve Ram. Okay, that's when I, when I, I, I laugh. Because I didn't even think about that. I mean, when, when I see people like hate on Israel and they're like defending Palestine, I'm like, they don't give a shit about you. Palestinians don't care about you. You're defending them and they can give a shit about you. And then I didn't think about, oh, why don't we just take, why don't we bring the refugees over here? Because, you know, the, the Palestinians are like somewhere south of Gaza and they're hanging out and they can't go back to where their home is and all that shit. And I didn't think about, like, why don't we host them here? Because I just, I don't think that. I'm not political like that. I'm not trying to save the world here. Okay? So when I see Steve Ram post a video that Biden's thinking of bringing them over here, I'm like, oh my God, that's so fucking perfect. Biden's brilliance. I'm legit impressed by him and his cabinet. Fucking impressed. So all of these Generation Z protesting at Columbia, now you have all these students who absolutely have no future because they don't fucking understand how shit works. Emotional, radicalized, gaslit by the people around them. And they're tearing Columbia College apart from the inside, forcing the police to come in and arrest them. So all these Generation Zombies protesting at Columbia... Maybe you can open up your home and take care of the Palestinians who have been suffering in Gaza. Maybe they will flood New York City with refugees so you can take care of them. After all, you're about taking care of the world, right? Saving the fucking world? Well, here's your chance. I hope the Palestinians take full advantage of what is it, what, what it, it is they're being given. Welcome to America. You have a lot of friends here, Palestinians. Palestinians are so popular. They have friends all over the world. And they have, and their vociferous defenders should be giving them a home. They should be first in line opening up their home. Welcome to the New World Order. Be careful, be very careful what you protest and what you wish for because you will get it. The system is about giving people what they want. You want to protect the Palestinians? Then protect them, open up your home, give them asylum. They want peace and quiet and they want the American dream. Well, you fucking give it to them. You fought for them. Put your money where your mouth is. What you will find are people who really don't care about the people they're defending. They just love to hate who they think the enemy is. Because most people have absolutely no intention to put their money where their mouth is. They will defend Palestine through the proxy of activism so they can hate Israel, so they can hate Jewish people. That's what the system is trying to prove. All the activists don't give a shit about anyone but themselves. Because when push comes to shove, they become silent and they walk away. It was never about helping people. It was about hating people. Okay, so there you go. America is helping Palestine. Those of you who are right wing, who hate Israel for bombing Palestine. Those of you who are liberal, who hate Israel because you feel you must defend Palestine. You can help take care of the refugees. We thank you for your service. You can now put your money where your mouth is. Maybe you can take them into your home and help them become American. I hope you adopt their children and give them a school. You can make you can't make this up. Who are the script writers for this? This is so Shakespearean. Oh yeah. And I admit I never saw this one coming. But I'm not surprised Biden is doing this. You don't like open borders? Okay, I get it. You're so political about the war in Gaza, but you won't go to Gaza to fight and defend the Palestinians against the evil Israelis. Well, we can bring the war home. You can see why the system is fighting each other out there. So we will take them in and take care of the refugees. Your tax money is, isn't putting your money is putting is your is putting your money where your mouth is. That's fucking brilliant yet again. So no one should be critical of America backing Israel if we can take care of refugees of Palestine. <laughs> you want them to have a homeland? Why don't you give them up why don't you give up your backyard? Why don't you give them a room in your house? Why don't you share space? 
face with them. This is the time to put your money where your mouth is. I hope to see many of you go and volunteer your services to help them. Those of you in Canton, Ohio, critical of Israel, I hope you're the first one to volunteer. I have a funny feeling you're, you are going to be silent about this. It's easier to be critical 6,000 miles away, but you can live right next to them and you can help them survive. Remember, we took, we took from the Indians, right, or the Native Americans a long time ago so we can house Palestinians who don't have a home because someone took their land. We can pay it forward. This is so American. Brilliant, brilliant people out there. <laughs> you want to take up for the downtrodden people? Take care of them. Live right next to them. Deal with their children and culture. I got to deal with your kids. All of us will have our own hell to deal with. I'm fine with helping whatever because at this point, I have no control over what my government does. If they want to take care of the world, that's fine. I will take care of myself. And I'll let my government figure out, figure it out. And I'll be polite to everyone I see on the street. I don't take in strangers. Fucking strangers are deadly. They're dangerous. You don't know who the fuck they are. You don't know what drives them. I am not some bleeding heart Republican or liberal. Want to take care of the world that I have no idea what their intention is for me. I am not deluded to think I can save anyone. And if I do try to save people, they will try to hurt me in the process. So no, I don't play the game of being a savior. But there are many bleeding heart Republicans and bleeding heart liberals that will try to save the world and then they get destroyed in the process. Well, you asked for it. I hope I don't hear. So I hope I don't hear anything from you guys when the system makes shit happen in your neck of the woods and they blame it on whatever. I hope I don't hear a peep from you. If you want to save the world, you better start putting your money where your mouth is. And if you decide to go broke taking care of the world, well, whose fault is that? I hope the United Kingdom will open their doors and allow them in because many of you are so critical of Israel and the war in another country that you know nothing about. So take the refugees in and give them a home, people in the United Kingdom. Make them feel welcome in, on this earth. I don't think any Palestinian would refuse to go to the United Kingdom and to America to be free, to have what you have. I hope they send the refugees all over the world into every community to give them peace and quiet because the Palestinians have so many friends all over the world who want to help them, who want to give them food and shelter and a place to live. Those who are in Australia who are critical of Israel, I hope you host a refugee family. Biden opening up the U.S. Gaza is coming to America. <laughs> okay, I already said that about the whole thing with being angry and pushing blood clots through. If you're afraid to get angry, you might get a heart attack. You won't be able to survive. Forget it. It doesn't even matter. So you might as well just be a zombie. Stoic. And people don't judge you. You'll never know if there's another option. Just don't confront specific people. Judge the world. Judge yourself. You're going to find so many clones out there who think that you are talking about them. Well, we are the world, aren't we? Funny how that is, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're heading into Atlantic hurricane season. How many people in Florida have made moves to figure out how to get out of Florida. How many people are in Florida right now that has watched the different hurricanes the last three years have made any move to get out of Florida? I would say zero slim to none. Either you financially can't or you think, oh, nothing's going to happen. Or, 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 or you're waiting for the insurance. You're, waiting, you're hoping that you survive the hurricane and you get out before it happens and your house gets demolished and you can take the money and run. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, yeah, IFL Science is saying mRNA brain cancer vaccine shows promise in early trials in humans and dogs. <laughs> All right, that's what I said. Overprotection is very deadly, especially if you've been conditioned not to release. If you don't have discernment, it won't matter what you do or do not do. But this is great. I love how humorous the system is. I mean, nothing is poison. But if you have to take a vaccine, you have failed to manage your own life and your body. I can't imagine you'll be able to handle the life activator from those vaccines. But hey, if you want to be protected by the government and everything else, fine. But if you can't manage protection and you become overprotected, thoughts and prayers to you. It was nice knowing you. Thoughts and prayers. Climate change is a killer. But if you're not in denial about it, it won't matter what you do. So, <laughs> I gotta love it. Oh yeah, this whole thing about love... I figured out that those that are talking about love and loving everybody and getting everybody all like all oh, love, they're nearing the end of their line. That's the cross, the cross, the figurative cross that J-World has to bear is watching 
the decline of their friends and their family and their circles of influence. The world doesn't need more love. But yes, the system does because they need people to depopulate themselves through love, through protection, through all that shit, right? And so in my world, in my opinion, the world does not need more love. I've had enough of death and dying and die suddenly and thoughts and prayers. The world needs more people who are so angry they want to live than they actually live. If you think I'm being an asshole right now, good, because it was saving my life. <laughs> it's what saved my life and giving you information you might actually use in the future, if not now. Long live the assholes who actually give a fuck about themselves and the world they live in. I'll tell you, I was in a, I was just aggressive yesterday. I was aggressive the day before. I mean, it, it was survival. It literally was survival. And so I'm seeing now some of these things from way back in 2012 resurface about, oh, Monsanto is so evil. And how, oh, look, this is where your food comes from. Oh, look, this is where the flavoring comes from. It comes from some sack in some animal. And we have people who actually kill wild game in Montana and other places. And they eat wild game, but they're having issues with where the flavoring comes from. What? Eat everything, I said, right? If you're a carnivore and you're eating animals in the wild... You're eating wild game. So shut up about where some of the flavor, the natural flavoring comes from. Jeez, your hypocrisy is just overwhelming. If you find surviving on earth is too overwhelming for you, you'll starve yourself. Remember the potato famine and the Irish were eating grass? The Irish potato famine, also known as the Great Hunger, lasted from 1845 to 1852 and caused starvation, disease, and emigration. Okay? So starvation then leads to disease. Huh? You see that connection? When you're starving, you will be deficient and then there'll be disease. That's the connection with starvation and disease. And look at how many people in the anti-GMO and the pro this and anti that world are fucking starving. And they're having a billion kids on top of that. And so the Irish potato famine, also known as the Great Hunger, lasted from 1845 to 1850, causing starvation and disease. And you know what? I'm right. I'm going to isolate this because I know people have missed this. I would too because when someone else is writing something, you're like, well, um, here, oops, not that. I don't want that. I'm going to write this. Here is the connection between starvation and disease. Jesus. And disease. People who are starving are also full of disease and intolerance and violent and violent. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. There you go. I'm going to put that there. Okay. And so let's see what that says. Here's the connection between starvation and disease. People who are starving are also full of disease and intolerant and intolerance, and violent. The Irish potato famine, also known as the Great Hunger, lasted from 1845 to 1852 and caused starvation, disease, and emigration. People had to leave. <sighs> the famine was caused by a plant disease called Phylothora infestans, or P. infestans, which had destroyed up to half the potato crop in 1845 and about three quarters of the crop over the next seven years. Next seven years, huh? A third of the Irish population depended on potatoes for food, so the famine had devastating results. Can you imagine when you don't get that starch that you need? The sugar that, that your DNA needs? Now you look at all these gluten-free people. Jeez. Starch-free, sugar-free people. Some sources have claimed that many Irish did eat grass during this famine, dying with green stains around their mouth that indicated their desperation. Some historians have even claimed that this reliance on grass during the famine explains the current practice of eating green foods on St. Patrick's Day. I fully expect the vegans and vegetarians to have green around their mouth. I know they're starving. You're not a true vegan or vegetarian until you can prove it. <laughs> now I'm being a little bitchy. But I suppose your expectation to die soon is, en is enough proof. Welcome to the new world when people voluntarily starve. And celebrate starvation, like Happy St. Patrick's Day, and posting their bu this bullshit of, uh, of being against Monsanto, and telling people to starve from different food brands because they're afraid of Monsanto. Oh, but they're connected to Bayer. Okay. 
Yeah, Bayer's a pharmaceutical. Absolutely, all that's bought biotech, FDA approved for the intention. And no one's keeping food from you. You're keeping food from yourself. You belo- you believe the perception that food was poison. That's called psychological operations to starve out the idiots out there in the world who think food is poison. Yeah. I, I know I'm saying I'm being mean, but when you voluntarily starve yourself, that's idiotic. Believe me, if they were poisoned, you'd be dead already. People die from starvation, not from Monsanto. Their perception of Monsanto is what's causing them to starve. And their friends are scaring the fuck out of them because their friends are fucking messed up too. But Monsanto is not killing people. People lack People's lack of release and starvation is causing them to develop cancer and different diseases. The depopulation with Monsanto is the perception they are the enemy. When Monsanto controls your food supply and you think all of it is poison, you will voluntarily starve or eat only organic. And you think that's going to last very long? Yeah. The vegans and vegetarians, do you think you can grow? Grow cattle in your yard? Not my hair. See how fucking strategic they are? And then you'll be relegated to eating, eating only grass like the Irish potato famine. Telling everyone to eat organic. Telling the poor Italians to outlaw lab-developed meat. Oh, yeah, the starvation through psychological operations is very well underway. Guess what these people are... Guess what? These people are falling apart. The people who are telling you food is poison are falling apart. They believe their own bullshit, and they actually are starving themselves. They are the poster children of the depopulation agenda. Your friends against the food supply are the poster children of depopulation. The system knew what the fuck they were doing. It's goddamn genius. And it's worth my, it's worth suffering in my world realizing this stuff. Because I was suffering yesterday and the day before. Because it took me seven years to get back on all the food supply. Without demonizing meat, milk, cheese, eggs, and anything. And gluten, whatever. I am not falling apart. And I feel every bit of life and immunological immune system activation that I'm supposed to feel. And even though it sucks sometimes, it's fucking goddamn worth it because I love my life and I respect the new life. Okay? So yes, you should be eating Aunt Jemima, Aurora Foods, Banquet, Best Foods, Betty Crocker, Black Kick, Bisquick, sorry, Cadbury, Campbell's, Capri Sun. You know, I don't eat all this stuff because I don't eat like Capri Sun. But I, yeah, I'll Butterworth and Nabisco. I, all of this stuff, people need to fucking survive. You know, if you don't eat any of this stuff and you only eat organic, you're gonna you're gonna starve. You, you might as well just have green stains around your mouth. Con, oh god, I'm saying use and eat. And so then I see another, and that the same people say, look, 1970, everyone was skinny wearing bikinis, right? They're all muscular. Yeah, that was a program. And then they're like, oh, 2024, bigger people. So I had to go and dispel that. First I had to, first I found this. Summary. Did they have sugar? I mean, I asked Google, did they have sugar in the 1970s? Of course they did. My mother took sugar off the table. We had aspartame and, and sugar substitutes like sunflakes that was like, that was sweeter than, um, the, what is it? What's the other flakes? Um, back. It has a tiger. They're great. <laughs> Anyways. And so we had like that, yeah, the cornflakes with, with sugar, but this was like the aspartame. So sunflakes was a this sugar substitute. And then we had those hard candies called sorbets, sorbets, and they were sugar free, like sugar free everything. Oh God. And it made us shit. Like I wouldn't believe. But summary, a newly discovered cache of industry documents reveals that the sugar industry worked closely with the National Institute of Health in the 1960s and 70s to develop a federal research program focused on approaches other than sugar reduction to prevent tooth decay in American children. Which is good. And um, because they realized that you can't be without sugar. But tooth decay, well, you need to have the salt. But then in the 1970s, scientists discovered that too much salt, which contains sodium, can lead to higher blood pressure, hypertension. Well, you have to support it with all the food and the food supply. So you see them playing around with the elements, okay, with the different nu- uh, nutritional resources. And they also were against the sugar. They were trying to find ways other than sugar, you know, whatever. But anyways, <sighs> they were doing a lot of research back then. And so... Uh, 
Other than just, yeah, because they knew that you can't take sugar away from people. Other than sugar reduction. That's what you have to understand what's going on here. Okay. You can't reduce the sugar. Anyway, so, so 1970, malnourished in a low-frequency environment. That's in 97, all the skinny people, the twiggies. And then in 2024, corked up and starving, which constricts blood vessels and so much overprotection. That's the obesity. And so I said the people back in the 1960s and 70s were so skinny because they were in starvation and ketosis. And you're seeing the fallout from that today. Their offspring are deficient and dealing with neurological and nutritional deficiencies. Yeah, they have diseases. High blood pressure isn't bad if you support it with food and water. People are under the impression that high blood pressure is bad because they don't understand how to manage symptoms to save their own life. And there will always be some kind of catalyst to raise your blood pressure, especially during climate change. So many people are on the low sodium diets now, now, and they still get high blood pressure. Yeah, because they can't get away from energy. But you can't take salt out of your diet or be on low sodium diets because you will fall apart and people are falling apart. They're salting in where you bring things together. And they're salting out where it brings things apart. The reason why you have high blood pressure is because the antidiuretic hormone. It kicks in because a person is dehydrated. They're not drinking enough water, so they retain water. They have that edema, edema, whatever you want to call it. That's why they get swelling, because their body is retaining water. The body doesn't trust a person to take care of itself. That's what lymphedema is the last couple of days. That's what I felt. I mean, you saw me. I felt bigger. I probably even looked a little bigger. But my shoulders and everything are feeling better. My arms are feeling better. And so when you are denying yourself nutrition, the body has its own defense mechanisms. And those mechanisms get weaponized against the people. People are living on defense aggressively until their body completely gives out. So you have swollen people who aren't taking enough salt who must eat some kind of sugar to keep their DNA somewhat intact. But there is no regulation of their system unless it's through the medical holistic system, which has caused people to fall apart and get huger and bigger. And become gelatinous. You see people who are gelatinous, the elderly, gelatinous. The immunocompromised, gelatinous. Until the system carves out all the gelatin and then they're down to nothing. They're, they look like a concentration camp victim. America has been under extreme experimentation. And you're seeing the fallout from it. Do not blame these people for the, for the situations they're in. They trusted the doctors who trusted the science of the time. Now the science is changing. And so, died suddenly, gym-loving Luke Foster passed away at age 37. And you see him, he's a big dude. And then there's killer kids. A 14-year-old suspect is dead following a confrontation with police after an active shooter was reported outside of Wisconsin Middle School, sources said. Yeah, now you have killer kids out there. Killer kids, scary stuff, homeschool at home, but not the zoo. Kids can read the news and see how dangerous it is out there without being caught in the crossfire. So you have all these people who are homeschooling their kids and they're taking them everywhere. They're taking them in public, taking them on cruises, taking them <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. Fucking deluded parents. All right. Um, bum, 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 yeah. A lot of earthquakes and crazy storms. Oh, yeah. This on 430, 2024, southwest Oklahoma, 18,000 feet. You see so much yellow and red and you see the swirly the counterclock oh my god it what is it a rotation f4 tornado has been observed around 10,000 to 12,000 feet this was likely one of the most powerful tornadoes ever to occur and it hit basically nothing so we'll never know i heard that some crops were completely re completely removed from the ground but that's it so far. So imagine that hit like a major city. <laughs> oh, the system is playing with people. <laughs> that's why I'm prepared to leave, to lose everything. If there, if we get tornado warnings, I'm prepared just to lose it all. I have absolutely no attachment to anything. None. All right. Reflections all about love. This is proof why no love equals death. I'm not trying to learn how to die. And I'm not trying to sanitize my life, but I'm also not embracing what people have accepted as inevitable, which is why I don't play the games people play, which is also why I'm not Christian. The irony is we have a lot of atheists out there who claim they're not Christian, who also embrace Christian ways of ending their life. Ascension, right? And they're all about love and they're in it very deeply. 
And so what did it, what did it say? I pulled this little blurb out. We attempt to protect ourselves from early death by avoiding all kinds of risks and sanitizing our entire lives. But all this focus on avoiding death doesn't prepare us to be ready for death. Hook writes, Love is the only force that allows us to hold on to one another close beyond the grave. That is why knowing how to love each other is also a way of knowing how to die. <laughs> oh, God. It's the love that moves, moves us beyond inhibition and regret and gives us peace in the end for the lives that we lived. Lives, lies, whoo, huh, lives, lies, you can't even tell the difference, right? Phonetically, it sounds the same. L-I-V-E, L-I-E-S, love today prepares us for death tomorrow. <laughs> oh, grieving what is lost is the final manifestation of love. Hook quotes many Christian writers to shape her thoughts on love, including Parker Palmer, Henry Nguyen, and Thomas Merton. But her conclusions are far from the perspective of love in the church I experience. <laughs> but that's pretty much what I see out there is that a lot of people who are nearing the end of their time, they're all about the love and they're loving their friends or loving their family. They have to get together because it might be the last time. Oh yeah. That's called what at the death march, the death gatherings. Oh yeah. You people have wakes when they're alive, right? That's the whole, you know, pleasure in paradise. Let's get together. You know, when people collect animals and children and friends and family and company and they're telling everyone how much they love them, the end is near for them. Misery and death love company. Welcome to the new world. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yes, if you can survive all the love out there, you're fucking awesome. If you can survive all the protection out there, you're fucking awesome. If you give yourself permission to be an asshole, not toxic, but an actual asshole, to repel what you perceive as a demon and you survive it without employing mercenaries of the system to take you down as humanely as possible, you're fucking awesome. If you can embrace pain and suffering and survive it and still respect people in your community, you're even more awesome than I thought. If you can't even relate to my information, I still think you're awesome. Thank you for your volunteering to be the human sacrifice. I hope you get paid very well for it. I hope you enjoy every aspect of it. I hope you get pleasure in paradise. Right? That's how the system rewards people for being part of the depopulation agenda. They'll give them pleasure in paradise. And then I was like, oh, please don't hate me or love me. <laughs> God, I'm so dramatic, aren't I? <laughs> Try to understand me because I know what I was saying. People are like, oh, my God, Jillian's stupid. Because I was getting pretty, like, pissy about people having kids and this and that. And I know how angry a lot of men are out there. And I know what can trigger men to be, very, you know. And, I, and I'm a woman, and so I have to be very careful because I know I can trigger men to be fucking idiotic. But you can't be afraid of that. So you still have to speak to their intelligence. And it's not easy speaking to people's intelligence because they don't tap into it because they're so emotional. So then I have to then bring it to then the softer side. Please don't hit me or love me. Just try to understand me. I am in survivor mode, right? But there's no way around it or else treat myself to death. Climate change is brutal and I feel it. Rage it out, but do not harm anyone in the process. So the system casts a death spell on humans, hypnotizing each other using love and protection. I broke the spell, and if one wants to survive, one must repel the demons of love and protection from others by being an asshole and embrace unpopularity. Many are not strong enough. Remember, I walked away from the deadly love of California Manson cult family of love and acceptance and protection. When those tentacles envelop you, they strangulate. I am an asshole, and I am proud of it, and I will survive. Long live the assholes who can survive their community of love and acceptance. Long live the assholes in our community who can embrace the food supply. You guys fucking rock whoever you are. You will give hope to the human race. Rage it out if you want to survive. Be the fucking asshole and repel the demons. And no, I'm not any religion or spirituality because I'm not trying to love anyone to death. That's all absolution. There's nothing I need to be absolved from because I can face my own accountability. When people post the past more than their future, they are done. They told everyone they are memory and they have no future. And they want to be as pain-free as possible, sliding into the afterlife as peaceful as possible. And they cannot fight for their life, loving everyone to death. So yeah, there's, there's a huge future out there. What's that future? Well, surviving climate change, making sure I survive all the changes, taking in information and learning how to speak from all points of view, writing out 
my frustrations, learning how to write coherent sentences without it being run on, but that's still work I got to do on that. Figuring out how to write the next book without being too discombobulated because there's so many angles I can go from. And honing in on my craft. What's that? Well, trying to save myself and be that representation for other humans who will have to choose for themselves. And surviving climate change. When influencers and the media sell you protection, it's not for you. It's for them protecting themselves from you. It's all about projection. I don't need your protection. When people start loving you and everything to death, they are nearing the end of the line. This is their way of saying goodbye to the people they love the most. Right now, many people are finding ways to love to say goodbye. In Italy, they know their time is up. Just watch those on Facebook with all their spirituality and love, and they extend they extend to everyone they hold dear. It is the end for them, and they are letting people know through their different ways. And so that is the hardest of all is deciphering the codes of death on social media. If you can actually, if you actually look and pay attention, you will see the signs. It's like you see the grim reapers in the background. That's the hardest of me, for me, knowing emotional codes of goodbye. Just like when suicidal people give away their most prized possessions. Now you know why I react to empaths so hard. They can be and are harbingers of death and love and feeling of love. I am seriously about life. And I can detect those who are all about death. And they're too far gone to redirect. When you surround yourself with death, that includes your profession. When in Rome, they do as Romans do. They will love you to death. Be glad they don't love you. Be extremely glad many people don't love you because that would mean they have the intention to destroy you. And then you have the intention to destroy them through love. I respect my husband more than I destructively love him as I love, as I love him so he can release the old world, but I respect him to make sure I allow him to take on the new world. If possible, I give him the choice and I don't bully him into love or destruction. Now you know why the way I am the way I am. Love has always been destructive. And that is the basis of family, the destructive Manson family. You can also detect love and spirituality in the influencers, activists out there nearing the end of their time, which is why I walked away from activism, because they will start loving their audience to death and then trying to protect them and save them to death, selling you everything under the sun. When influencers and media sell you protection, it's not for you. It's for them protecting them from you. It's all about projection. So when you're an asshole and you can survive your own emotions of assholeness, you'll repel the demons and fight to save yourself. And you won't fall for the hypnotizing spell of love and destruction and protection. So when some, someone sells you protection, someone sells you a detox, someone sells you a concoction, someone sells you an MLM supplement, they're trying to take you out, protecting themselves from you. Those are the supplement salesmen protecting themselves from you. I'm writing that down. The supplements salesmen and people who sell you protection are actually protecting themselves from you by taking you down notch by notch. It was never about protecting you. It was about, it was about protecting themselves from you by selling you death. And that's pretty much it. That's anyone that sells you protection. That's, yeah, that's all the surgeries. That's all the oncology. <laughs> that's all the people that sell you pot. Okay. The supplement salesmen and people who sell you protection are actually protecting themselves from you by taking you down notch by notch. It was never about protecting you. It was about protecting themselves from you by selling you death. That's the world you live in right now. That's how the system figured some shit out. 
Again, I need to be an asshole to survive. And yes, I release all over Facebook, but I do not harm anyone or confront anyone. And I get all issues off my chest so it doesn't eat me alive. I also eat all foods to support the release process. That is also why I do Facebook Live to express myself without harming anyone. And it feels amazing to have it the freedom to express. That's also why my mother trained me to write out my frustrations instead of punching somebody out. Violence is never the answer, ever, even in the surgical industry. All right. Um, if you're going to be an asshole, survive the energy. I need to be an asshole. Survive the aggressive energy. And, I rep and it repels and attracts the right people. Uh, okay, that's what I wrote here, yeah. Which is why the mother and the father's life are most important. Okay, so we have arsonists. So we have, I guess, two youth that set house on fire and someone died inside. Someone thinks that they did something to the guy and they tried to burn the evidence. Which is why the mother and father's life are the most important. Because if the mother and father don't survive, what chance do your children have? When you treat disease on deficient bodies, we are developing serial killers out there. And then encouraging your kids to have children on top of that. These are unregulated children out of control. The ones that have burned that guy out. What are you producing in our population? People having children with absolutely no regard for themselves or their community. They turn into situations like this. Children that want to go and do harm to others. These are basically natural killer T cells with immature B cells. We did this to ourselves. Even the upper class people developing children who turn into rapists on college campuses. Even people like Ted Bundy who became a respectable person of society who also was a serial killer. That's how he lured the women in because he's a lawyer or something and he's a politician. And here you go. He... he he was able to, he had carte blanche to go and destroy beautiful women. That's what happens when you treat disease and you have a million children on top of that. That's why the system is turning up the heat. Because you can't control your fucking kids. And that includes cancer, which are disorganized, chaotic children in your body. That's why I don't socialize with anyone. Because I know how fucking dangerous it is out there. And no, I'm not impressed with your children. Because what did you just produce in our society that we will have to deal with later? That will have to be either institutionalized or be drugged out. No, I'm not impressed with your ability to procreate. I should be thankful for the herbalists destroying people, but even that is a double-edged sword. Sometimes you get a serial killer out of that. So yeah, it's going to get worse before it gets before anything gets better. So I just stay away from people for the most part because it's completely fucked out there. And so yeah, an arsonist and murder at Lincoln Avenue, Northwest. Blink camera has two slaw two Tall, slim, underage, 22 hoodies and jeans. And so around 1.15 a.m. on Lincoln Avenue Northwest caught a home on fire, intentionally killing a man in his home. Canton Fire was on scene approximately 1.30, 15 minutes later. Police check your cameras for any coverage of surrounding cross streets for two men that caught a man's home on fire with him inside that was dead by the time the law enforcement showed up to, showed up to the scene. See, that $5,000 reward to give any information on those arsonists. And there, yeah, there's another building, a commercial building that was put on fire. And so natural killer T-cells. I learned that with all the anti-V people. Too many NK T-cells causes homicidal tendencies if they were programmed to attack others or suicidal tendencies. Too many B lymphocytes causes chaos, destruction, and deadly behaviors. Overprotection can cause deadly outcomes in the person and the general population, which is why not having children now during climate change is deadly. Why not only having children now during climate change is deadly, but also treating your disease having have become deadly. Even using the herbs and the supplements and remedies and starvation and succumbing to food allergies just makes it even worse. And when people know they're at the end of their line, they love everyone to death. Right now, to survive, you have to be an asshole, and you have to eat food to push those little beasts out of your body. You can't afford to quell your immune system anymore, which is why we are in the predicament we're in. Because the system practice, children should be seen and not heard. Well, the children are, children are going to be heard, and they'll take all of you down with them, if you allow them. That's why I stay home and stay safe. Down, done. <laughs> the children are on the move and the prowl, and they're not regulated, and they're out of control, and sometimes they're in adult bodies because the adult is suffering so astronomically. That's why I stay home and stay safe. It's deadly out there. I don't live in fucking fantasy land like most of you. And I'm very aware of the deadly realities that we're experiencing right now. Okay?
And so there you go. Now you know why I was really aggressive against the empaths. And no, I don't have any more relationship with the empaths. The ones that I knew were empathic that I've had conflict with in the past, they don't reach out to me anymore. Because they're still empathic. They're still coming from love. They're still in destruct mode. And they're not changing. They're going into, a, they're ascending to wherever. They're going to Pleiades or wherever the heck it is. And so, yeah, even the jade juice may have uh, cast a light on society, but not many people have evolved with me. Not many people at all. And, and actually, that's okay. Because it means that the system pulled out all the stops. They thought of everything. You're dealing with a very advanced, genius system that knows what they're doing. And you don't fuck with the government. You do not fuck with the government. So, learn how to assimilate, learn how to protect yourself. Don't become a savior or Satan or you will do yourself in. But if you're at the end of your line, it won't matter anyways. So you'll play whatever games you play and the system will watch you. All right, bye.